Okay, we're ready to roll. What's on the chopping block for today, Glenn? Good morning, Eric. I I was uh, prompted by a guy who had, he had a lot that is skinny, narrow, and he only by the time he was ended up making uh, concessions for parking and for uh, setbacks, he had a very limited space with which to build. So okay. I came up with a very narrow design for him. Okay, yeah, I can tell. He liked our earlier, he liked our earlier tiny house, but he's got, his lot is too narrow. So uh, what I did is I made him a Dutch gable here. And this thing has the capacity of a basement because it gets cold there and they have to get below the frost line anyway. Okay. You know, and they have to have their water pipes down below uh, the, uh, the ground, minimum five feet. If you look at this, you'll see that it's got steep, it's got a steep roof just like the other one did. And the advantage of that is that if you have a snow load and you, and you're trying to build in an area where you're, uh, going to be potentially snowed upon, uh, if you design your roof to where it's above a 12 and 12 pitch, like in this case, it's a 16 and 12. Uh -huh. If you're above a 12 and 12 pitch, you, every rafter is considered a brace. In other words, as far as building code is concerned, uh, bracing the ridge doesn't work as any, any brace that's less than 45 degrees above horizontal is not considered a, a legal brace. Anything above 45 degrees can be considered a brace. Okay. Okay, so if we use a steep pitch like this, every rafter can be considered a brace on that ridge. So you don't need a lot of extra bracing. You know, this ridge here is a two by 12 ridge. And then what you have is you've got four by 10 valleys and each of those valleys is itself a brace. Okay. Right. So as far as its ability to stand up under a huge snowfall, well, for one thing, on a steep roof, snow doesn't collect as much. It roll. tends to slide off more easily than it does on a lower pitched roof. Uh -huh. Let me... Uh, let me share this other screen with you. Okay, so are you seeing this one now, the the, the rendered view? Yeah, okay, so uh, a big portion of it I'm seeing it would be below ground and then those stair, those little uh, walkways, the stairs, that's, that's on, yeah. uh, what, okay. It, that, that, this, little, this little porch here, it, t it takes a couple steps to get up to this little porch and then you go in the front door here and then this is a this is this design is what they call a dutch a dutch gable and this just happens to be what the, the style that they liked so i give them a little dutch gable in the front to cutesy it up a little bit but essentially what you have here is this uh on the top if you go up the stairs now this this particular design, it has a full set of stairs at the end of it. It's a long it's a long skinny design, but the but the the last quarter of the of the design here, this is all staircase out here. This design out here is is all staircase. Yeah, I'm seeing it. Okay, now what I'm going to show you now is what the basement looks like. Uh, okay, so this is what the basement looks like. So the basement is just an office down here and a bathroom. Okay. 
And then what you see here is uh, uh, the steps it takes to get down there. Two sets, this, two flights. Yeah, so this this quarter of the house is used up with uh, with a uh, with landings and staircases here. But you got about 250 square feet uh, upstairs, and then you got another 300 square feet downstairs. And uh, I mean, this house ends up being somewhere in the neighborhood of 960 square feet. Oh, wow. Yeah, well, of course, it's not something an elderly person is gonna want to uh, get involved in. Let me see if I... Uh... That's still a big improvement off the last one, or not, I shouldn't say improvement, well, yeah, but it adds a, it's a, a whole... Yeah, it's a much, it's a much bigger uh, design. Okay. But this one here, Okay, you see this thing in the corner here? Yeah, what is that? This is that bell heater I was showing you. Uh -huh. This is that rocket heater. You could actually heat this house if you put one of these, let me zoom in here. See, this is that bell heater that... Uh, right. And, and this is that J, this is that J box that you get and we should provide a link on our website for people to go to that dragon heater. You can buy shippable cores for the J box for these uh, rocket heaters. Okay. And these are just uh, these are just flues. These are uh, fireplace flues. I'll show you a. Uh... There it is. There you go. Okay, so this is that bell heater with the flue sections exploded with a little bit of space between them so you can see how they line up. Uh -huh. These are uh, fireplace flues that you can buy. And you can see how the holes are cut in here. Right. So the holes, uh, ex you know, basically what you have is you, you put that uh, shippable core in, in this thing. This is the bottom one. This is where the, you, you stick the wood in the top of this thing here. Okay, into the J-Box. Into the J-Box, and then it has a heat riser that goes up into this first column. And then what happens then is the hot gases go up, and then they and then they cool as they go down, and, and the hotter ones, you know, basically this thing is designed so that this thing rises up, and the hot air... The hot air rises and the cold air sinks. Okay. And that's what this uh, uh, this design takes advantage of. So, where, so then the, you have, where, where does the heat travel? It goes through the J-Box and then the hot air rises and then it goes into the next flume? Right, the hot air rises, the cold, colder air sinks. And then what happens then is it gets, it goes into this, it goes through this hole. See this hole here? Yep. Over into the uh, the tallest column, okay, and then the hot air rises and the cold air sinks. But then, as it goes down, it gets it gets uh, forced by the incoming warm air, forces this air in this column out into. See the hole in see the hole down here in the bottom of this one? Yeah. So this so the same thing happens here. The air gets forced over into that one. And then the hot air rises and the sinks. And then this hole here is for a clean out. It's for one of those cast iron clean outs that you can open up and clean out any soot okay. that gathers in this area. But this hole over here is where the exhaust is, and that goes out your wall. Oh. So, so the exhaust can be uh, go, can go out and just connected to like a triple wall pipe that that then goes up and exhausts it out like, like a dryer vent. Uh huh. And the and the and the hot gases are, and the end result are hot gases that aren't much hotter than a. A dryer vent. Right, in a, in a uh, home this small, I imagine it would easily be capable of heating the whole house, right? What oh, yeah, think? yeah. A, a, a design like this, 
uses one tenth the firewood of a regular fireplace or a wood stove. That's why they. That's why people use these rocket heaters. They're extremely efficient. So this is our latest tiny house. I really like that one. That's that's neat. Yeah, this is a little bit more of a house, and uh, and this one could be made into a duplex too. If you mirrored mm -hmm. this, if you mirrored this, you could flip it end to end, and then all you'd lose is this window right here. And you could have this thing end to end with uh, a duplex. Oh. If you were going to use this as a rental, you could make a you could make a duplex out of this real easy. Oh, that's neat. You're right. Yeah. And it could be, you know, it could any long skinny lot would handle this. Yeah. So there you go. All right. Thank you, Glenn.